We know that Nvidia and AMD practically dominate in the GPU market share, and the rest don't even come close compared to these. But neither Nvidia nor AMD produce their own chips and rely on other companies to manufacture the chips for them. And this raises a critical question. What's so special about Nvidia and AMD that leads to having so much moat? And we also see a huge uprising in China, notably from Huawei, as they are also trying to compete in chip production. And Huawei is surprisingly on a good path as they partner up with SMIC to compete against the West. And both of these require taking a deeper look at the supply chain in AI. Starting from raw materials to chip design, to fabs that manufacture chips, and to AI models. Hi, this is Caleb from Caleb Writes Code. And I am by Cloud. Together, we are going to dig deeper into the supply chain of AI to get a better understanding of how everything connects, from the frontier AI labs to the companies that built the hardware and make some companies indispensable. Nvidia had about $60 billion in sales in 2024. And starting in 2022 was when demand for for AI really started to pick up, not only for AI data centers, but also in terms of how much revenue that they're bringing in. As you can see, Nvidia's revenue has seen a drastic jump due to growing demand in their newest chips, mostly from the data center side. And if you overlay AMD's revenue, you also see huge revenue jump as if they're small startups. In order for Nvidia and AMD to not panic and meet all these demands, they need to have their supply chain locked down because if they don't, they would end up with very angry customers that promise the world huge data center buildouts. So making chips like H100 and B100, which are one of the most sought after chips on the planet, how you source your GPUs need to scale with the rising demand. And we can break down the supply chain in the following order. Raw materials, which goes into making wafers, chip design, which requires skills equivalent to writing ancient glyphs to make rocks do math, and your fab or foundry that takes the design and manufactures them, including packaging them and mass producing them into a semiconductor chip to be sold on the market. So let's lay them out in these steps. Raw materials, chip design, and manufacturing. Like Cloud mentioned earlier, in order to cook up a really nice semiconductor that we use, we need access to sand, a material called silicate mineral. And thankfully, the earth is full of them. You can find them at beaches, riverbeds, deserts, we got tons. So at least in that regard, we don't have to fight for more resources. So in order to make wafers that are based in silicon, we need to heat them up to extract the silicon to make a lot of GPUs. And just like Breaking Bad, in order to make good wafers, you need the purest stuff in the town, something like 99.9999999% pure quartz, or as they like to call it, the 9N silicon. This kind of high-grade quartz is called HPQ, which is short for high purity quartz, and of course, not everything can be this pure. So there are actually three different grades depending on the purity of the silicon dioxide. But even though the earth crust has a huge deposit of silicon minerals, most of them are not pure enough for semiconductor production. And the availability of HPQ is unfortunately not as widely available as silicate. One of the biggest suppliers of HBQ is none other than Spruce Pine, North Carolina in the United States. And it is estimated that 70 to 90% of the world's HBQ supply is from Spruce Pine, North Carolina. And because of this, a lot of people fear that if the mine in North Carolina goes south, we'll have a massive shortage in chips. While we certainly do have lower grade HPQs that we can source from, they're not like the kinds that we get from Spruce Pine, North Carolina. They got the good stuff. China has also been trying to deleverage their reliance on other countries to get their hands on silicon. Recently, China discovered more than 35 million tons of HPQ in Qingling, Henan province, and Otei in Xinjiang. And the quality of the HPQ they found was 99 0.996% silicon dioxide, which is decent enough. So even though 80% of China's HPQ demand is met by the mine in North Carolina, they are still trying to be self-reliant on their HPQ supply. And besides silicon, which is the biggest ingredient in semiconductor design, similar supply networks exist for other common materials like copper, aluminum, and tin. Copper is used to make electrical connection inside chips between layers. Aluminum is needed for packaging and heat dissipation. Tin is used to bond chips during assembly, and all these other elements that exist here as dependencies play a role in manufacturing GPUs. But before we talk about manufacturing them, we need to first talk about chip design. To give you a sense of how complex the modern chip design is, Nvidia's H100 GPU has around 80 billion transistors, and the newer B100 class chips reach over.
over 200 billion. Designing chips at this scale requires extreme engineering to route signals and deliver power through dense copper interconnects, manage how he spreads through the metal layers, and plan the real estate so all these transistors can fit and operate reliably on a single piece of silicon. So when it comes to chip design, we have to make some classifications to start with. For example, you have companies that only work on designing chips and outsource the actual manufacturing somewhere else, which is called fabless. And we also have companies that do the whole nine yards of designing the chips as well as manufacturing them. These types of companies are called integrated device manufacturers. Companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Apple are all examples of fabless that design these chips but outsource the manufacturing. And companies like Samsung and Intel do both designs in-house as well as manufacture them. And other companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft also design their own chips as well, notably their Inferentia and Tranium for Amazon, TPU for Google, and Azure Maya 100 for Microsoft. But they all still rely on manufacturing their chips elsewhere. So we would technically classify them as fabless as well, since they design their own chips, but don't produce them by themselves. So as you can see, the reliance on manufacturing of high quality chips is very heavily in few companies that actually manufacture them. And in China, companies like Huawei, High Silicon, B-Ring Technology, and Cambricon are all designing their own GPUs as well. But the past five years have been really difficult for these companies because of strict US export controls. So in response, China has repeatedly emphasized plans to reduce its dependence on foreign countries for advanced chips and to build a more self-sufficient domestic semiconductor supply chain. And Chip design is actually more interconnected than it might seem. Just as a tall building reuses proven components like elevator systems and plumbing, modern chip design relies on what's called a standard cell library. So instead of redesigning a 200 billion transistor GPU from scratch each time, engineers assemble it from pre-verified building blocks such as memory cells and logic gates and combine them like Lego blocks into a much larger, more complex structures. So when you are designing chips, especially as you get down to three nanometers and five nanometers in size, the complexity in building blocks as adders and multiplexers can get extremely dicey, which is why companies like ARM, Synopsys, and Cadence all lock down their design in IP and essentially lend them out to fabless companies with royalties and license fees. And this kind of complexity makes it that much more difficult for China to claim independence in terms of their reliance on other countries to design their own chips. Given that ARM, Synopsys, and Cadence are all owned and affiliated as American companies. So once the chip design is complete, we move into manufacturing. This is where all the rare materials we talked about earlier, like HPQ and other metals, combine with chip designs from fabless companies such as Nvidia and AMD to produce chips like the H100 and B100. These chips powered the training of AI models at Frontier Labs like OpenAI, Anthropic, and XAI. And the companies that manufacture these chips are called foundries. There are only a few companies in the world that can manufacture advanced chips. In South Korea, there is Samsung, and in Taiwan, there is TSMC. As of recent, other players such as SMIC in China and Intel in the US has been expanding their ability to make cutting-edge chips. And chip manufacturing can largely be broken down into the following steps. Wafer manufacturing, oxidization, photolithography, etching, deposition, metal wiring, EDS, and packaging. And while learning about how the chip manufacturing process is super interesting, we're focusing on the supply chain side, which means we're trying to expose where all the bottlenecks are in the supply chain. And for foundries that actually manufacture chips, the biggest bottleneck is a photolithography stage in the manufacturing process. The photolithography step is where patterns are printed onto the silicon wafer using a photo mask, which is a glass plate that encodes the circuit design provided by fabulous companies like Nvidia. This is an extremely delicate and high precision process that requires specialized equipment called extreme ultraviolet scanners. And this EUV machine alone could cost more than 300 million, which is a pretty insane capital investment. What's even more absurd is that there is essentially only one company in the world that produces these EUV machines called ASML, which is a Dutch firm. So if you want to become a foundry that makes chips, you are gonna need one of these bad boys. So since China recently completely went self-sufficient in chip production, they're going to need to overcome this massive obstacle of making high precision and expensive EUV lithography machines. And SMIC have suggested that their capacity to produce near EUV grade lithography is not a problem. But their Huawei SN 950 GPU is still roughly 6% of the performance as NVIDIA's next-generation VR200 chip. 
And the outlook for SMIC is somewhat split because some people say that their lithography technology won't catch up at least until after 2030, while others are pretty bullish in their ability to innovate. In any case, Huawei plans to make around 600,000 of these Ascend 910C GPU in 2026 and expand their production line with their upcoming GPUs like 950, 960, and 970. And other Chinese fabulous like Campricon and Biren Technologies are also trying to generate their own GPUs using their own foundry but these GPUs largely seem to be good for inference rather than training. U.S. companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Google, and Microsoft that all have access to Taiwan and South Korea to use their most advanced foundry, they plan to continue innovating more chips down to 2 to 3 nanometers in size and use their own supply chain as a leverage to get ahead in chip manufacturing, which will be extremely important in innovating newer models in AI, especially as AI training centers like Stargate and Colossus are expanding.